Huh. Okay, well, got a little pre-snow, pre-weather making video going on here. It's supposed to snow again tonight. It's Monday. God knows what the date is, because I sure as hell don't. But, uh, yeah. I'm just walking down across the field here, because my son, Timothy, he decided we'd take the snowmobile for a ride, which is fine. But, he, plugged, pl he fouled the plugs. And when you foul the plugs in this thing, you don't move them. So, I'm going to stop walking here and show you that way down there, there's an Articat snowmobile sitting. Been there for a couple of days. So anyhow, I went down to the auto parts store. Got me some NGK. Hopefully these are the right ones. I think they are. I'm not going to stop walking because I don't have time. But uh, I'm going to throw these plugs in there and uh, fire it up and see what happens. All right, here it is, Articat Panther 340 Touring Sled, nothing super special. Kind of needs a new seat on it. Eh, it's a 2000 or so, I think, maybe 2002, I don't know, something like that anyway. But uh, really a low mile sled. The hood needs some extra care given to it because for some reason that cable got busted. But anyway, get these, oh Tim. Anyway, I'm just going to pull both of these plugs out. Now, oh, they're a different plug than what I was using and what I just bought, but oh well. We'll see what happens. It's always fun to see what happens, right? Yeah. yeah it's still a BR. And a, oh, what the heck? Oh, he never even tightened it up. So I don't have to pull both. Uh, there it is. Okay. Put... Creepers. Put that one in there. Sorry about the camera angles, guys. <laughs> but trying to work one hand is a pain in the ass. So, anyways, we could do this. Oh, come on. I know I'm not getting the camera. Anyways, just gonna spin this thing on here. My fingers. It fits perfectly. And then I'm going to. There's a compression ring on that thing. Once it's tightened down, that's it. Okay. We're good there. Put that back. Throw that on top there. And yes, it is a Suzuki motor. Now, Tim took the uh, battery out because, well, it just didn't need to be in there, I guess. Oh man, what did he do to this thing? Oh, I see. Yanging on the damn... Alright, I gotta do some work here. Give me a sec. Okay, well, there's an enrichener on this thing, so you kind of... It's not a... Yeah, it's an enrichener. They call it a choke, or... Maybe that's a choke? I don't know. One's one thing, the other's another. That's a choke. An enrichener is better, I think. Pull it once. Twice. Three times a charm. Come on, baby! Sure it's on. Push to off, yeah, we're good. Wish I had some starting fluid. So anyways, I'm gonna pull my guts out on this thing. Uh, yeah, I hate pulling this thing. It's a bitch to start. Just really terrible. So, give me a couple minutes here and I'll get it started and we'll show you how we go. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little dirty little trick here that I learned years ago. Um, I got two issues going on here. I got no fuel in the carb. So that's posing a problem. She won't start. The other thing is I've got a can of starting fluid. Beautiful thing, right? Just give her a couple shots and she'll go. The bad thing is the top is busted off. Well, that sucks because I can't get the shit out of there. So what I'm going to do is I've got this little screwdriver gizmo, and I took the spark plug out. See, I'm gonna drop that down into the into the hole there where the spark plug's supposed to go. Now watch what I'm gonna do to get. Well, let me see if I can get my. Where in the heck is that? I don't know if I can even show the top of this motor. Oh, come on now. Where the heck are you? Anyway, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that can of starting fluid, this guy here, and I have a little bitty wrench, and I can stick that in the hole here, see? And it'll squirt. What I need is that screwdriver gizmo is basically going to act like a wick. So I can't turn a can upside down and turn that thing on, but I can put that put that spray right on that bar there and it's going to run right down. Hopefully I got enough starting fluid in here. It'll it'll run right down that bar and into the cylinder and hopefully we can get this thing to fire. So you don't really want to put too much of that crack in there because well it's just not good for the engine because it's dry so I'm gonna screw that on there like a so like a so and I may have to repeat this process several times but you're gonna get the gist of how to get fluid it works with gasoline too if you're in a tight spot just stick something down in there it can be a stick for all that matters just an old twig or something but anyways I'm gonna pull this thing and see if she goes Whoa! Not quite enough fuel in there yet. It's trying to pump the gas up through that filter, so... Yeah, but it's going to take me a couple of shots of that. I just wanted to show you that that's how you can get some, some gas or some starting fluid or alcohol or anything down into those piston heads, into them jugs, um, if you break the top off your starting fluid. There's just a quick tip. Well... I'm going to call that a failure for right now. Um, oh, let me zoom that back out. Uh, yeah, it's... I think I think there's a... I think the float is stuck. And I just don't have the tools. And it's 28 degrees. And I'm wearing thin pants and a, just a coat. So I'm a little bit cold. But I'll be back. I'll get it going. The son of a beach ball anyway. But anyways, now it's just kind of... I'm just going to walk back up, get the truck with the tools in it, come on down with a hammer, Chevy wrench, and beat on it. That might tap her loose, and it might go, because there's gas there. It's pumping it. It is all the way to the float bowl, but it's not going into the float. So, yeah, a little bit of troubles there. Maybe I'll get a different can of starting fluid, too.